and a right perfect timing. Y'all are taking a drink just as we come online. <laughs> oh. And then Erica had to go fix something of hers. She found <laughs> her battery's dying. <laughs> <laughs> On there. <laughs> Guys. Welcome to episode, what is it? 49. Episode 49 nice. of More Than Dice. Uh, guys, if you noticed, um, we have some people online. Uh, Kathy is gone to, um, uh, was it Reaper? ReaperCon this weekend. And John had to go do something else with his family, so he is off so i had to get someone else in here to take his place or it'd be just me and well you know we don't just want me on here because i'm a weirdo so we are on episode 49 and it is our dust episode that y'all had requested uh where we talk with quite a few people and quite a few things about the dusk game and how things are going um if you notice i have two people in one box this time uh, and in the two boxes, we all would like to introduce yourself. Alicia. And Greg from Dust USA. And of course, right below me is Erica, uh, which I'll know is Erica DG uh, in the channel. She's graciously decided to come on here begrudgingly. Yeah, you know. So, <laughs> other than that, um, we are now streaming live and everything's going okay. Uh, we have a tradition here that uh, y'all should know about, that anytime we come on air, we always talk about what we're drinking today. Um, but before we do that, guys, we have a couple of polls, and we are giving away a model today. I will be working and finishing up um, a Dust Cobra Rattler, which I found on Amazon. I was like, oh, that looks cool to paint. And I'm going to be finishing this up today, uh, which I'm almost done. Uh, nice. Did some really cool airbrushing. When we get to the paint, Cami will be able to see a little bit better because I've already got like the top pieces done. Um, I'll be working on the base and the last bit of the metal bits uh, and give that away. So with that, I also need some information from y'all. I am going to try to figure out what I'm going to be painting on next. Uh, as you know, we do have some new Breach Storm models that uh, Trevi has given us to paint. Um, also, I still work on my Sylvaneth, and I still have the Kill Team Terrain. Uh, it is a free poll. Make sure you vote on that. Tell me what I should be painting next. And giveaway. We are going to change the amount for each ticket to 20, not 200, 20. And remember, just do uh, exclamation point raffle on what you're going to be wanting and how many you want to put in and we will do that um other than that guys thanks for coming on what are y'all drinking today oh wait 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 wait, wait, wait. we got to do this we got to do this a certain way uh let's do beauty before brains so greg what are you drinking today <laughs> you were just talking about that <laughs> <laughs> so this is what i'm drinking right now and what is it? It's a French cider. So this is a cider actually from Normandy. It's uh, not at all like American so, cider. American yeah. cider is like sicky sweet. It's like syrupy. This is very dry. And it's also very low alcohol so, so that yeah. we can drink it the entire time of this podcast and not be falling off. <laughs> well, see, that's so the good part is being really <laughs> shit-faced on here. Oh, we will be. We will be. Yeah, we don't drink usually. So. But we won't be puking and passing out on you. So uh, we, we figured we did owe you at least that amount of time of somewhat functional body, you know. So, yeah, it's drier. Uh, it's really bubbly. What's uh, the percentage? Uh, five degrees, so mm -hmm. it's really nothing. It's five percent. So, so yeah, it's it's really nice, really light, uh, really. You feel the the crispness of the apple fruit, but you're not you don't have the extra sugar. So yeah, it's it's really it's really enjoyable. But we already finished the bottle before this, so yeah. mi minus what he spilled opening it because it had been shaken, and yeah. what I spilled as I was reaching for my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> As we said, shit faced. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's what we're drinking right now. What, and what Erica, you? what are you drinking? 
it doesn't look like anything, I know, but it's this weird, like, mule combo. My roommate made it. It's basically, it's pink. This really kind of crappy, but kind of nice French pink lemonade I got from work for super cheap. It was like a dollar. Mm-hmm. And ginger beer and the last of my precious gin. Nice. Oh. That must be good. It's not bad. I've had worse. It's <laughs> gin, so it makes me happy. I think it would be refreshing. It's like a ginger yeah. gin fizz. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah, it sounds really nice. Yeah. I would yeah. drink that. Not bad. Maybe with a leaf of ma- of, of peppermint in it. You know? oh. Have you ever had a crush some mint? What is that thing called? A martini royale. Okay. <gasps> that is my favorite drink in the world. That um, drink. That's a trap. Oh, it's a trap. <laughs> I had that in France. I would drink those when I visited Greg. There was this beautiful little cafe at the end of the street, and they bring out this bulbous glass. So you take a glass that is basically high like that, but twice the width. It's going to be ice. Then it's going to be martini, prosecco, uh, and that's all. And mint. mint. And you crush the mint inside the alcohol, inside the, the ice, and you just it's drink so that. It's so refreshing in this hot climate. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. it is the only time in my life I could not feel my cheeks. <laughs> I could feel my eyeballs moving in my cheeks, but I could not feel my cheeks. <laughs> and then I had to get across these cobblestones and these high-heeled shoes to get to the kebab stand so I could get some food because I couldn't feel my cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, if you haven't had one, it is fantastic and it's so easy to make and it's not expensive and it it will kill you. Super dry martini. It's, oh, yeah. it's really important. Extra dry. Uh, my drink of choice today is, of course, some good old Maker's Mark. Um... Which, you know, is my go-to whenever I don't feel like drinking beer. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, I don't think we owe any cheers to anybody. I think we've got everybody. Um, remember anybody? Uh, thank you guys for being here. Um, like I said, the, um, some of our community have, have been wanting now to be on here. Because of, we do a state of the game. And so it's really awesome that y'all are coming on. So, Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, All right, let's go and switch over to the paint cam. Um, that way you can watch me paint and try to get this done. Um, and see what I'm looking at. Um, I went and bought this, and I did do a night where I worked on this uh, on stream. And this is a.k.a. Cobra slash Rattler depending on what type of head is on it. Um, I did reprime this because uh, I bought a primed version, uh, but I only primed like the top part of it because I wanted to see how y'all's prime is on the bottom and how the paint takes to the bottom of it compared to the top. Um, just because it's, you know, I'm kind of weird like that. But this <laughs> is a camo pattern, pattern I went with. Um, I did use my airbrush. It was really fun to use this. I don't get to use it a lot. Uh, but I repainted it green and then did the little camo pattern. I've got pretty much these top parts finished. Uh, I need to add a little bit of texture to this gun, which I thought was the coolest part of the gun. Uh, and I did this piece. Got some decent amount of camo on it. That's really nice, yeah. I have no clue if I do well or not. I just paint <laughs> How did you avoid the tires when you were airbrushing? I didn't. Um, like, you know about these parts right here? Yeah. yeah. What I did is I primed the entire thing black, uh, spray painted it all, or, you know, used my airbrush. This uh, I used Army Painter Elf Green as the green, which was actually a really, almost a complete match for the green that was on here to begin with. Yes. Um, and then I airbrushed it, and then after that, I just repainted black all over the parts I wanted to paint a different color. Because you, you don't know if you can see it, it's kind of really hard, but this little piston has some of the mm-hmm. airbrush, bl- airbrush black on it, which I'm going to paint over in a little bit. I can't even see it. It looks like you somehow masked off the tires completely and didn't get any paint on it. It looks really great. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this rough iron 
which I really like from, I have a lot of army painter paints right now because I, they had a huge sale and, uh, I'll be using that for what you call the tires. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I will be using gun metal to paint these metal parts. Um, and then these hoses on here, I'm going to do a little bit different with them. Uh, and then I'm going to paint the base and I'm going to paint the base, this desert yellow, mm -hmm. uh, to go with the camo pattern. Um, and after I paint that and dry brush it and get the texture and everything on it, cause I'll be dry brushing it up with a little bit of white. I'm going to be adding these tufts of grass, uh, where is it? the Citadel Mordeheim tuff, which kind of will match a little bit with it. Mm -hmm. and, That's it'll nice. it, and it'll sit on it. Uh, I'll have pictures up, of course, before we give it away today. Uh, so guys, if you're there, uh, make sure you go ahead and uh, go for the giveaway. Entries are only 20, 20, 20 dice heads. Uh, it's exclamation point raffle space and then how many raffle tickets you want and give that away you just got to give me your address um, we are on Facebook too but I'm not sure if it's going to be showing up or a lot of people going to be watching it you only seem like I have one person I bet you it's John um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started because um, we have a lot to go through um, I did send Erica some questions but before we do anything what is dust? What is dust? <laughs> uh, you want to do it? Oh no! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, dust is a universe that was created pff, probably 15 years ago uh, by Paolo Parente. Uh, it was really his own creation based on everything that he likes uh, on with with the Second World War and the weird Panzer, uh, how, how do you call it, uh, diesel punk universe. Okay. So it's it comes from all sources of inspiration, obviously, uh, and he really made a whole universe by itself. Um, Ten years ago, he started, well, 11 years ago, he started wo working with uh, Olivier Zamfirescu uh, on a game. Uh, both were former Rackham employees, and he really wanted to do something with dust. Uh, he already had a line of uh, miniatures that were on 135th scale, that were really model kits. And he wanted to, to do a miniature game, because he's a miniature gamer. Uh, he's a huge fan of Games Workshop, for example. So, And he, they really wanted to do that. So they created dust tactics at that point. Uh, and they launched the game with the FFG ten years ago. Yeah, I remember when it was when it was FFG. Yeah, so that's for the that's for the game. Uh, in the meantime, there was also a comic book uh, that pa that Paolo made that was published by Image Comics. Uh, and then right now we also have other uh, licensing projects. Uh, like for example, we have movies that are being worked on. Okay. Uh, right now, right now. So we signed some contracts with uh, with a studio, and they are working on the script. Uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's where we are with Dust right now. Uh, that's what Dust is. It's really a diesel punk weird World War game. Maybe he wants the uh, story, dear. Uh, so yeah, for the story, <laughs> <laughs> you're in 1947. Uh, that's awesome. The war never ended. Uh, Hitler got killed during a parade in Germany by one of his own snipers uh, and the Wehrmacht took the power uh, of Germany and of the Axis powers. Uh, parallel to that, uh, they found uh, an alien spaceship uh, with a pilot in it, still alive, in Antarctica. The pilot told them that he was a Vril and that he was here for a specific mission. Uh, after interrogating this uh, this uh, pilot uh, that was really really alien, <laughs> they found a new source of energy, the VK, that was actually everywhere in the world because the the real came several thousand years ago, uh, and were already uh, trying to kind of terraform their, the the Earth for them to be able to use the resources, 
And the VK became this source of power that they used at war now. And it changed the, the face of war because now you're going to have workers like the one you're painting, but you also have lasers, phasers, Tesla weapons, rocketeers, uh, zombies, and what did uh, he say? gorillas with, the, with the flamethrowers. I mean, you have a lot of things like that. Uh, you also have the mythos now because the real, when he was questioned uh, forcefully by the blood cuts, told them that they were coming back and they were coming back for one reason, to destroy Earth, because they have awakened what shouldn't have been awakened. And this is the army that we introduced this year, the Mythos, uh, because we're going to have the monsters from the Cthulhu Mythos uh, invading the Earth. And they are the sworn enemies of the Vrills. So the Vrills are coming back and they're going to lay the ground flat <laughs> so that it doesn't happen. How how did Joe get started doing Dust? Because I mean, Dust has gone through a lot of hands uh, yeah. through through throughout the years that some of our people were talking about. And how did you two, as a team, get started doing Dust USA? Greg War is the marketing manager for the parent company Dust Hong Kong, um, and before it was Dust Hong Kong, uh, we were going to a convention. Uh, called GTS for retailers only and Greg was supposed to be showing the game and you know convincing retailers that this was a good product mm -hmm. and our booth was small but overrun <laughs> with interest and at a point um, I actually had to step in and be more than just the wife that was coming <laughs> to go to Las Vegas for the first time and I had to start repeating exactly what my husband was saying. So it was trial by fire. Um, Paolo realized that there was a demand for the product in the United States, but that there was a hesitation in ordering the product because it was coming from China and all of that that entailed with bringing a product into the country. Um, Delays, custom yes. uh, f prices of shipping. So we went out to lunch and Paolo offered that we should start up a US distribution and that Greg and I would handle it from the state side and we would confirm with him on certain things where he's at. So, um, and that's how it started. Uh, just about two months after the trip to Las Vegas, we had formed the company and basically the week we formed the company, we had our first convention, which was Origins in Columbus. And that was so, right uh, 2016. 2016, we basically hit the ground running, and we were lucky enough, we were actually inquiring at Gen Con about getting a booth for the next year, 2017, and they had said, well, we do have some spaces, but I need your information today if you want them. So we got in that very same year that we formed, and it's just been a whirlwind ever since. It's yeah, they gave us the agreement for the booth in June for the the convention in August. So we had two months to prepare Gen Con. <laughs> it was funky. So I got a taste of forming and building booths in, in, in a very fast period of time on what we were going to do for a booth design that would reflect what we want for Dust. So, because I, I met y'all through uh, one of Adepticons you probably didn't remember. Because, uh, of course, y'all are stupid, stupid busy all the time. And I actually <laughs> didn't even, I, I wasn't doing the podcast then. It was uh, fairly new uh, for me. Uh -huh. And I saw the product, and I've always been interested in this stuff. But what's it like? Because y'all go on a lot of cons. How do you, I mean, what is it like as the con life is, I guess, like I guess we would put it, running this company and doing the con life? It can be exhausting at times. Um, <laughs> Understatement of the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have another job um, that I'm still doing. And um, it can be exhausting to put everything together, what goes into a convention, being that I only mentally do it part time because, you know, I can't say I am full time. Um, Gregoire, of course, does the job full time. So between the two of us, we kind of tag team it to get things ready. But in all honesty, to answer your question, for me, 
and I think for Gregoire also, convention is actually our vacation. It's when things make sense and we get reimbursement for busting our asses on a weekly basis to keep this company running with it He's being ready, really ready. only two people. Um, Paolo can do a lot, but he can't do that much from where he's at. And to see all the people playing and the smiling faces and having the people come and thanking us for the product, for the vibe, for whatever, or just somebody coming up and complimenting my boots. It's just, <laughs> convention is like, it's like a better than Disneyland. It, it is a place where it's like acceptance. You can go to a con and you can wear a tutu and a beard and, you know, walk around with whatever. And it's good. I mean, it really is just a reward to go to the convention. I could not imagine doing this job and never going to the convention and seeing who we are selling to and who is playing the game. I think that it would be an empty feeling to sell a product and not see the end cons consumer and actually talk to them. There is really a, a feeling of exhilaration and excitement when you are at a convention and you see this kid playing and really making action sounds, just pushing the miniatures and going pew, 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 you know, uh, or just a, we had the, we shared this picture on our personal Facebook at a point, but this kid that is just the nose against the glass case and you don't have the sound, but during the whole thing, he was telling himself uh, his own story with toy soldiers. And he was looking in the case at Adepticon yeah. and he was talking to himself and he was describing his own fantasy story of what was going on in that yeah. glass case. And he was <laughs> just into it. And his mom was like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, I wish I could just videotape him forever. But it's just that kind of enthusiasm. And then he went to one of our demo tables and he just, he didn't want to, he didn't want to play the game. He just wanted to play with the miniatures. So he just went over and he made up his own little story, like uh, dark helmet in space balls when he was playing with his, <laughs> His action figures, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. It's, it's, you know, we're really making an effort to to reach um, women and children in the game, and I feel like they're kind of left out, you know, in the whole dynamic of trying to build something for them. So, I, I that's pretty much it. Yeah. The. Convention season is is really exhausting. It's it's a lot of efforts you carry. I mean, the average of stuff that we carry during a show is uh, above four tons of products yeah. and material and this kind of thing. So you you walk. I mean, you walk dozens of miles per day, uh, and you you still have. I mean. Oh, and our team. Our, our team is. Our team is amazing. I mean, <laughs> they are, they I don't are, know where these people came from and what super, we ever did karma-wise to deserve them, but we don't deserve they them, do but we enjoy so them. much for so little. I mean, we, they have we very have little free human. time. They are super humans. I mean, they, they, we give them basically half a day during the whole show for for free, and the rest they work on the booth. And most of them don't even take this half day because they see the crowd and they're like, I They'll cannot come leave. back early. They will come they're back like, early, all these kind of things. They barely take uh, lunch breaks because same thing. They see the crowd and they're like, I cannot leave the other guys this way or you or you. And I mean, we have a we have a staff that is amazing during shows, and it's really a family. Uh, I have been working with some of them for 12 years. Some of them did their first convention at Gen Con, and still, it's we have this really this family feeling uh, with them because they work a lot. I mean, we're talking 50 to 60 demos a day per person. It's it's insane. It's really an, an insane rhythm, and they do it with a smile and. We have compliments about their behavior, about the quality of their demo and these kind of things. And, and the then most recently, we'll start having events after the show. So yeah. we end at 6. And then we are, we're supposed to be at a show at 7. And then they come to it. So then they're doing that all night long. And it's like they just they never stop. They never rest. And for Gen Con itself, because we had difficulty finding housing this year, and we were actually 45 minutes to an hour away. It was an hour, an a solid hour. hour. Yeah. 
because of the works and the sinkholes. There were times where they weren't coming into the house until three o'clock in the morning and then waking up at six thirty in the morning to turn around and go and work all day on the booth again. But I don't even know how or why they would want to come back, but they do. And it's just a miracle to me. And yeah. I'm we were really lucky, like really, 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 really lucky uh, because they are great people and they are really helping us. And if we are here today and successful as we are, because we're really progressing in a very nice manner, it's thanks to these guys. Yeah. And so it's, it's really cool. Uh, Doug Hamilton wanted to say uh, hi, guys. He's hey, watching. Doug. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Doug's a good old friend of mine. I love him to death. Yeah, Doug. Uh, Doug is amazing. Oh, I've known Doug for, uh, well, since my first travel in the U.S. So 2006, uh, we met because he was a fan of Rackham at that time, and I was oh, working yeah. for that. And I was working for the company, so I was attending Origins, which was my first show in the U.S. ever, my first trip in the U.S. ever, also. And yeah, it, it, we. We clicked. <laughs> he's a fun, he's a really fun guy and really, really genuinely nice. Yes. So that's really rare. So. Okay, speaking of re- being really busy, because we see it on your Facebook all the time. You guys have kids. How in the world do you do all of these conventions and all of this stuff with your family too? Like, how does that work? It doesn't, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and I am just lucky that my children understand. And they know that we're trying to do something here. Um, one convention I was able to have my kids at, and that was Origins. And it was just this one this year um, that someone else could bring them. I am an extremely protective mother, and I don't want my children walking around at the convention without an adult watching them the entire time. Um, my Their father is a policeman, and I'm sure that he would not be okay with them perusing the halls of Gen Con alone. Um, they're very good children, but I didn't raise my children to be stranger danger. I taught them to be kind and to be generous and to, you know, not look at people immediately suspiciously. And so in a ways I've failed them slightly (laughs) that I haven't really got them ready for adulthood. Uh, they're slowly learning by now going to public school about the differences and things and but it is difficult and so I do try to take time to take them on trips Uh, for instance last year I took them to Europe for three weeks Uh, it was something that I never thought I would be able to do and I just wanted to give my children just at least one time in my life I wanted to give them some bigger picture of the world to know that the world is a big place and that she they could do whatever they wanted to do you know and to show them that you know, it's not anything to be afraid of to leave your own country and go travel and see everything you know you, you shouldn't be afraid because you know terrorism or that kind of thing you need to be aware of it but not shackled by it you know <laughs> yeah so it is difficult. Um, Greg will tell you we, we miss them horribly. Yeah. They do beg to come. They do say that they won't be a problem on the booth. But and having then, them there at Origins, they were already standing around me and just kind of staring at me like, Mom, what do I do now? Mom. And I, I, I can't be Mom on the booth and, and Mom in real life at the same time. It's... I'm so overworked when I'm doing the shows because I go directly from my day job to the show and work the show and then back that I just, I don't have the same amount of patience. It's, you know what I'm saying? So, and I don't like to ever show my children that they're not number one. So if I know I'm going to be in a situation where I can't make them number one at that moment, I can't bring them. So, but we do get plenty of time together. Um, Like, for instance, when we do these demo days, the children do come with us. Or um, now I have the kids on Fridays um, because the visitation days have changed. So Fridays they come with us to the Toledo game room and they play. And if they don't feel like playing, then, you know, we go to the mall or they always beg me to go to Starbucks because they want some sort of coffee flavored something or other. Coffee flavored Um, sugar. Yes. And mostly because the Starbucks is inside a bookstore, so they want to go, you know, hide in the stacks of books and read something. So, I, 
complete it's a balancing act and you just have to make it work and i think the most important thing is just to show your children every day that they're the most important thing and that you love them and then whatever kind of work schedule you have as long as you make some sort of effort for your children the children will understand and they'll see um let's go get let's get let's get to the real nitty-gritty because this is what we call our state of the game episode um and we talked a little bit of uh the history and the fluff of it but the game plays different than most other games i've played because it's played on a grid map um now it's not t technically a grid but there's a spots for placing miniatures what? Yeah, yeah, you have a grid. You can call it. We call it a grid. Yeah, it's uh, okay. We call it gridded. No. Okay. We call it gridded because you still have this grid. Uh, you're not using obviously, uh, you know, uh, references with uh, letters and <laughs> and numbers. But yeah, we, we use a grid because the when Paolo uh, and Olivier worked on the game, they they agreed uh, that they were really fed up with all the dispute, argument, and discussions about distances, ranges. And line of sights. It was really uh, so when it was created, when we started working on it, it was this whole debate where uh, uh, Rackham uh, with confrontation and 8043 or uh, Games Workshop with the, I think it was the V V5 of the game of uh, Warmer 40k decided to talk about real line of sights, and then you had games like War Machines that started using uh, volumes on their miniatures mm -hmm. to express line of sights. And you, everyone was trying to have this idea about line of sights and distances to to remove more and more of the of the arguments of, but you see the tip of my weapon, but you see the top of my head, but you see my left ankle, but not the right one, these kind of things. And uh, nothing was really satisfactory. And they finally decided that the best way to handle it was to remove the simulation out of it and to make it in a grid so that nothing would be argued about and that's what happened with dust tactics uh obviously they also wanted to to please another another crowd so at really quick uh, ffg uh, and then battlefront when they had the game also uh made a gridless version of it a free form Mm -hmm. uh, that played on the regular Battlefield, so it was called Warfare for the first edition and Battlefield for the second edition. Uh, now, uh, with Dust 1947, uh, everything is in the same book, so you can still play grid or gridless, but uh, the same rules apply for both. And it's just, you have seven pages of difference, uh, especially to resolve the problem of line of sight and distances, and measuring distances. So. So there, there's that. But yeah, the, the fundamental of the game is really to play on a grid and to remove all doubts about line of sights, ranges, and these kind of things. So As a company, we support the gridded. So at company events, it will be grid. So it just makes things a lot easier. It's, it's, it's easier to set up. It's easier to organize. It's easier to... to the whole mood of the show to, to is, arbitrate. is it's, much more relaxed. And and the gridless crowd is more autonomous by default. They are older players and they don't need any help organizing events. So, so that makes sense. <laughs> um, now... I've played it on the grid because uh, I've done, like I said, I've done a few demo games, and I'm gonna still mm -hmm. Erica saying, how is it played without the grid? Because the stat cards that you get, because like any game, they have a stat card uh -huh. uh, that says like the ranges of the guns and all the stats. How is it played outside of the grid? How do how do you know how far people move? You replace the range ranges that are in boxes. So mm -hmm. when 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 you see range four, for example, uh -huh. uh, you multiply by. Uh, I don't even remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah. ah! <laughs> you multiply by something to get it in inches, and you multiply by four to get it in centimeters. So it's something like that. I think it's. I think that no, actually, the range is exactly no. It's not the range in inches. Oh wow! I really don't remember. It's fantastic. <laughs> but yeah, you have a multiplier. Can we phone a friend. <laughs> you may not phone a friend. <laughs> can, can we ask the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a 50 50? <laughs> no, seriously, the, you, you have a multiplier. It's simple. It's just that every time with the inches and the centimeters, I, I mix the two of them uh, because, again, 
because you measure with the tape measure, you have to make it so that the metric system and the how do you call it your standout system can can do it. So so yeah, it's that that you have that the line of sight will be determined by your leader that is at the center of the of the I'm stressed of your just squad. listening to it. Are you are you stressing? Because <laughs> I'm I'm, like, I'm really my blood pressure is elevating. So, I'm like, is there a so test? The, so the dot that is at the center of a box that helps you determine line of sight is replaced by the leader of the squad. So the, so that's it's really the same system. It's just that you use a tape measure for everything. So Casino Reed says that it's times by four to get inches. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Uh, Casino reads. Hopefully your uh, thing is going on. I've never had the Twitch app, mobile app, do that. Let me know uh, and send me some information so I can see if it's happening just the app or if it's uh, Twitch streaming. He's getting a black uh, the he or she is getting a black screen on that. Um, I know Erica had a question about uh, your models though. I did. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forcing her to ask questions. <laughs> Shut up, Rondo. Okay, so the models, they're, some of them are pre-assembled and they're pretty like primed, but mm -hmm. some of them aren't. Does, does it like this, the um, pre-assembled and pre-primed do better than the other ones or does it matter? So we have three ways of selling our products. Uh, the first one, the main one, the biggest seller is primed. So they are put together and primed. That is that is the best seller by far. I mean, there's absolutely no, it's out of proportion compared to the other two. The second way is the premium version. So it's completely painted. It's assembled and completely painted. Uh, obviously the premium, hence the name, but it's really the deluxe version of our game uh, where you just open the box and really you have absolutely nothing to do. It's already done for you. Uh, and we're talking about a very good level of painting because that's what we show on our demo tables. It's and a hand paint. And, it's not a machine yeah, paint. And, so. that's, and that's what we show also in our glass cases. So we're pretty confident with it. Uh, and then the third way is the model kit. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the parts are made in plastic separately and we sell them non-painted, non non-glued together, nothing. You have them on a sprue or in little baggies depending on the type of plastic. Uh, and that's the third way of selling them. Uh, I, it's also the least good seller for us. The, the sure kit. Why you have it like three different ways, or because uh, again, um, this is really the baby of Paolo, and Paolo is a fan of miniature gaming as a whole. He likes the hobby aspect of it. He likes the gaming aspect of it, but he knows that he doesn't have the time for the hobby aspect of it. But he knows that also some people have the time for it and crave it. So he made it available for them. Charles is on. Say hi to Charles. Hey. <laughs> hey, Chuck. <laughs> uh, also, so. if you're on Facebook, guys, if you jump over to Twitch, click that follow button upper right-hand corner, you can get into the drawing by using your uh, dice that you get automatically by following us, because I think you get 200, and you can get a bunch of tickets, because I'm giving this away at the end of the show. Uh, so if you're on Facebook and you got a Twitch account, jump over there, hit follow on us. Um, link is on there, and you can get into the drawing, because I'm going to give this away at the end of the podcast. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, so these are the three ways that we are selling the game, and... Definitely, I mean, when I sell one model kit, I sell probably 10 premium. And when I sell 10 premium, I sell probably 1,000 prime. So, yeah, the, the, the difference, the proportion is really massive. Uh, it's, it, that's really what I told you because, honestly, we market the game as primed a lot. So mm -hmm. that you see the difference also in our marketing uh, because that's the cheapest way to get it because it's actually the same price primed or model kit i mean the price is the price difference is five dollars so it's really ridiculous uh and you just take it out of the box it's already there for you you have minimum amount of glue to put all this kind of thing so it's really easy um the, and, this one was the already primed version and like i says yeah. i reprimed everything and did just because you know i'm a i'm a hobbyist when i come to this stuff and i wanted to 
see also how well the prime did because also some stuff you know it's already primed it's like really super thick this wasn't really really thick on the model either which i was really surprised about because like i said some companies are like oh we have this primed model for you and it's like they dipped it in syrup and this Um, was not thick primed on the model so i was really i was really happy about that what most people don't know is that dust hong kong um, the parent company is actually specialized in plastics manufacturing. So dust is their actual showcase piece that they used to just use to say, look what we can do in plastic. And then use that as an advertising so that other game companies would have their plastics made by us. So we specialize in making plastics. And we know a lot about plastics and exactly what types of primers to use on what types of plastics. So Paolo is extremely picky and extremely knowledgeable in the whole process and everything. So he is quite the perfectionist. So I'm really glad that you noticed that. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't thick at all. It was very thin, like an airbrush type mm-hmm. uh, coat of primer. So it wasn't uh, chunky at all. It held paint really nice. Uh, so I didn't have to worry about it. Um, but like I said, as me as a hobby person, um, I personally, I think if I buy any more, which we're going to talk about this in just a second, uh, I'm, I'm looking into getting one of your factions. Uh, I <laughs> want the uh, kits because I want to put it all together and do all my own stuff because I want to do different things with it. But that's mm-hmm. just because, you know, I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> no, you're an artist. Yeah. But yeah, the, the primer that we use is, is really specifically made for the plastic, so it doesn't flick off, it doesn't mm-hmm. uh, clutter, it doesn't clutter, it doesn't, you know, bu- bubble up, all this kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Technically, we we really know what we're doing, um, and we're really proud of it because, as Paolo says, it there's only one brand that does plastic better than we do. So and soon it's not going to be true anymore because we're going to show some. Uh, hard plastic miniatures that we are releasing for Christmas that are one step ahead. So we're really, really proud. Technically, we're really proud of our products. Like, really, it's... We know that our game is great, but our products are amazing. So, um, Going back to this, because I know that uh, Congo, one of our normal listeners, he's getting the Luftwaffe box. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He says he's getting into that. Uh, and this is because... Uh, I might pick this up just because y'all showed it off at Gen Con, which I'm sad I didn't get to go, uh, was the giant Japanese, was it Samurai or whatever it was? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That Actually, thing was amazing. You, you know what? We have the prototypes here. Do you want us to dig it out really quick? Oh, that would be awesome. It, I mean, it's kind of like Indiana Jones in, in the warehouse right now, but if you give me a minute, I'll find it. Sure. Yeah, because I'll, I'll, uh, I'll blow them up. Oh, Radio Freeze, thank you for the follow. And I did not get to get uh, Arcardian. Thank you for the follow. Um, I got a little feedback. Are we on this? Um, guys, if you uh, are just coming in, um, uh, make sure you go in there and do... Uh, we're doing a giveaway. Um, it costs you 20 tickets. You just do exclamation point raffle, space, and how many tickets you want to buy. Uh, and if not, uh, if you need to know how many dice you have, it's exclamation point dice. Uh, join it over there. Um, but while she's digging that out, because I saw your starter box for the Japanese, what are the Japanese? What are their play styles? So uh, first, I'm going to answer a question that just popped up from Crimson1919 uh-huh. that, ask, that is asking if the stuff from old versions of Dust is compat- compatible with the new stuff. Yes. Hell yes. Good. Uh, nothing, nothing that we release is out of date. You can play with everything you ever had from the FFG time or later, and it's really you can really use everything. So we just have some card decks that update your your collection of miniatures to the new version of the game, or you can also download our app. We have an iOS and uh, oh, do oh that helps. Thank you. So we have an iOS and Android app that gives you all the cards for free, also where you can build your army also, uh, and or you can download them for free also from our website. So it's really really easy to update your collection. Uh, for the Japanese, uh, this is our new block. So the different big factions of the games are called block. Uh, so you have the Allies, the SSU, 
the axis and you have the mythos now and as starting in november you're going to have the japanese imperial navy uh so the story of that is that uh, two events happened that made the japanese imperial navy secede from regular japan uh, the first one is that they discovered an island uh, in the middle of the Pacific on the Nemo point uh, called Relier. And because of that, they, when they arrived on the, on the island, they found these people that really looked like fish. And they realized that they, they were discovering something new and they had to equip themselves against it. Got so, yeah. Uh, Radio Free, uh, if you are trying to do it, there you go. I'll give you five tickets. Thank you, sir. Uh, look, Congo, Congo just got it. You do exclamation point raffle space and how many tickets you want to go for um, to get into this raffle. Um, and you're allowed to spend as many as you want. Um, okay, hold on a second. Let me blow this screen up. If I would have yeah. known this, I would have done some really cool stuff. All right, All right guys, we're going to blow up some of this and get this. As big as possible, so we can see. Because that was the one model I saw. I was like, "Oh, holy oh. crap! That thing's huge." Let's see, we have some breakage. He just tacked them. He didn't glue yeah. them yet. <laughs> so this is a 3D print. Okay. okay so is this uh, going to no, be the actual size? This is, no, this is the prototype of the prototype. So, so the, the actual size is going to reduce by 15 percent. So it's one inch smaller. Holy crap. That thing is awesome. I'm sorry. That thing is cool as shit. Yeah. Oh, that's... We're really happy with it. It's massive, really. And even one inch less, it's going to be... It's still going to be huge. Yeah, yeah, completely. Holy crap, I want that. I don't even play Dust, but I want that. <laughs> we're always excited when Paolo leaves the prototypes. <laughs> we're like, <laughs> yes! Yeah, you have an amount of detail that is really, really nice. Can we, can we see the back of it a bit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, sure. show, I'm showing it to you in two seconds. Oh, there's still foam. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. I don't still packing you. foam? Yes. Yeah. There we crap. go. What size base is that on? There will no be, There is no base. It doesn't need a base. It holds by itself. So when you play it on the field, there's not going to be a base on it? It's just going to be... No. Oh, man. Yep. Doesn't he, he takes up two squares, it? Take, it? it takes up two squares, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think it's so cool. I need one of those. <laughs> I'll try and show you the head properly. That thing is cool. So there will be some minor changes to the final model. Oh, of course. Uh, the heads, for example, you're going to have two heads, and they're going to be able to turn uh, because this one has a fixed head, and mm -hmm. it, does, it doesn't look in the way of the rifle, so that really pisses off the Paolo. <laughs> so the, he's changing the head so that it can turn, and because of the profile needs, um, the profile needs also an additional weapon for uh, balance, game balance reason. Uh -huh. He's going to have a shoulder, a sponson with a, a machine gun on it. So yeah, minor changes, but the 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 biggest part of the miniature is going to be like that. So it's it's really, I mean, Japan is really. Um, a big project for us. Uh -huh. It's really a it's really a whole army by itself, and it's really important for us. Um, it has been something that has been waited for by the fans since the launch of the game, basically, uh, because even in the the art books that Paolo used to do, uh, which I have somewhere, uh, like like the old dust modeling books and these kind of things are the sketchbooks. He actually showed the Japanese, uh, so the at, at that time it was the Japanese paratroopers and the Navy. Uh, so they're going to be released finally. So it's, it's really for us um, a way to conclude an era of dust. So we're really, really, really excited about it. <laughs> well, I saw the, um, I was looking on the website and I saw uh, the new army box y'all are doing, which I'm going to say y'all are very, uh, the pricing on stuff is very good. Uh, it doesn't sound like you're, you know, you're not jacking it really high, but it's not really low. You you want, is free. You are a Sorry, we just got a rave coming in. Thank you, Radio Free, for the host. We appreciate it. It means a ton to us. Um, 
that your army boxes are very priced very competitively. Uh, they're like I said, they're not really high, they're not really low. They're just right where someone can get in, and it seems like they're priced just right. Uh, so I was really impressed with that uh, because, of course, like all nerds, we are always pressured, you know, by how much we can spend on our hobbies because we don't just have one army, we don't have just one game either. Yeah. We have all of them. We are really trying to to make it so that it's at the good price for everyone. Obviously, uh, compared to the old version that was uh, sold by FFG, for example, the price have been raised. Mm -hmm. But uh, a lot of people were surprised by that. But as Paolo announced it uh, this year, that's the first year actually that Dust is finally profitable. Uh, oh, wow. Because it, ha it has yeah. really been a project of love for everyone at Dust HK uh, for years because they were not profitable on it. It was really a, a showcase and um, really a labor of love for Paolo. Uh, now we finally made it profitable and still maintaining some prices that are, I would say, fair. Uh, obviously, it's an expensive hobby. Of course. Uh, we're not, we're not going to try and say that we have cheap, mini, cheap minis. And I think that we are also one of the first brands that is not trying to uh, market our products to be just cheaper than the leader of the market. Uh, we uh, do have a question from Facebook. Will the Japanese models be sold in primed and painted versions also? Yes, okay. always. The, the prime and premium are a constant release. Uh, it's something that is always done for every reference. The model kits, uh, strangely enough, because of production uh, problems or, or, or schedule, sometimes the model kits are not released at the same time as the other two, but okay. they will be released in, a, in the future. Okay. And we're trying to get better at that also, but it's really a matter of production schedule. Uh, so. And with the premium, because it's a hand paint, only so many of them are actually painted at a time. Oh yeah, it's And really because we have such a hectic production schedule, it takes a while for those to get back into line to be then repainted again. So we do run out at times on the premium. Oh, of um, course. But we, we can order it in for you, but sometimes it will take some time because, again, we release quite a few miniatures per year. And, you know, everything has to get redone. And because there's an extensive backlist of, of minis that <laughs> we've made over the years, sometimes some of the old stuff gets remade again. Yeah. Um, what was another one? Uh, what, what is the Japanese going to play like? Because I noticed that they, I was looking at some of the pictures of them and they look very, and I hate to use this term, but very much snake eyes of uh, acrobatic, all jet black, leathery, rubbery suits, uh, that the infantry were wearing. Uh, do they have a certain play style? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, the Japanese are going to be for us an occasion to release new abilities and new gameplay styles. Uh, so typically right now the two troops that you're going to have mainly uh, at the release are going to be the ninjas and the cadets. Uh, so the cadets are really these troops of female soldiers, uh, very young female soldiers that were uh, trained by the Japanese Navy uh, as a counter invasion uh, force. And we are using these troops as fast, uh, fast attack troops. The ninjas are a deep infiltration troop. Uh, that are really meant for guerrilla warfare and you're gonna have tactics that involve uh, improved camouflage for example so you're not gonna be able to see them on the battlefield unless you're in range one of them so that means uh, basically head-to-head -head combat uh -huh. uh, you, you, they are gonna have extremely powerful weapons also uh, for, the, for the Japanese army the walkers are gonna be extremely expensive in points uh, because the the walkers are going to be the same kind of chassis that you've seen with the other armies. No, not stronger, not weaker, but they have weapons like the railgun. So the big one that the, that I just showed, for example, is a railgun cannon. But you're going to have railguns that are a weapon that is extremely different from the other weapons since it has a range unlimited. So and it also creates uh, more critical damages. So it's really a glass cannon army where you're going to have to really play with the scenery in a different way that you used to play the game so, so but it sounds like it's going to be a, a lower model count than most most armies because of the tend to be expensive to field you can you can be uh, trapped in a in a in this trap yeah <laughs> you, can, you can find yourself in a situation where you're going to be in a in a very 
uh, low account of models. So it's, it's going to be a balancing between your walkers and your troops and the kind of troops that you take. Uh, you will see also that the support weapons are more fragile. Instead of having three or four HPs uh, per, uh, per base, uh, you're going to be at two HPs. But same thing, they're going to have a more powerful weapon and more ways to use them. So it's it's really a different gameplay. Uh, the game has is obviously extremely lethal by itself. Mm -hmm. It's it's not a grind game. Uh, you will not be in a situation where you have to go to the eighth round to exactly know if you have destroyed everything. <laughs> it's really uh, you really exchange uh, high velocity punches with your with your opponents all the time. So so J Japan brings uh, by themselves a very very strong uppercut. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a really a fun faction to play. Uh, I have one of my guys, one of my demo guys, that is completely in love with the gameplay of the faction. He's part of the of the beta team for the profiles, and he's like, "That's amazing!" I mean, he had a lot of fun playing it, and he's really really looking forward to it. And I think that people are gonna enjoy it. Uh, we got another question from Facebook uh, from Greg, or excuse me, Michael Barnes, and he's wondering when uh, are we gonna get some. Uh, Updates on restock. <laughs> um, I'm afraid I'm not necessarily understanding the questions. Um, we we Is are any... restocking pretty often. Uh, we are really rarely out of a product for more than maybe a few weeks. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's also in Europe or in the US because it's not going to be the same distributor. Yeah. So so I. If you can precise the question, I would be happy to answer. Okay. We'll see if he has something to go along with it. Um, uh -huh. We typically go to the media section right about now, but you know what? I want to continue with this because we got some good questions going through, and we haven't touched one of the biggest questions that I want to talk about, mm -hmm. and it's tournaments. I'm a tournament player. I play War Machine and Hordes as a tournament player. I go to tournaments all the time, so I'm always looking at tournament play. What are tournament play like? Actually, as a company, we're starting to branch away from tournament as the competitive setting to be more game day, where there's more of a communal effort towards a common goal um, with scenarios and things like that. Because we've found that not everybody wants the competitiveness of an actual tournament. Okay. And my favorite scenario is is when you go to a tournament and you see that the guy who always wins walks through the door and you're like, well, come on. <laughs> you know, I, I, I get that you're not going to just walk out and say, you know, I'm not going to do it. But, you know, after a while, you know, it just gets old and you need to have something more. Okay. It's, it's the thing that you kind of learn as, you know, you're growing up as an adult. There's winners and there's losers. But... The loser has to have fun, too. I agree. And if the loser's not having fun, they're not going to want to play. No. So our goal as a company is to try to find ways to make it fun to just play the game and not put the emphasis on winning. And I'm not trying to do the whole let's have participation awards, you know? Correct. It's just the fact that we will have tournaments, but we will also have, you know, game days. We call them dust days. Mm hmm um, and then we've also found that a lot of people won't come to tournaments because they don't want the competitiveness, but they do want to play with other people. So it is drawing out actually more of a crowd because you have other people who maybe just started to play and they don't have that anxiety that, well, I'm not good enough yet because I just started playing. So what? Let's get out. Let's have fun. You know, so when we have and host an event or we go to an event, um, the winners are all announced, you know, and in ranking and all that kind of thing. But as a company, we don't repost that because we don't care who won. We care that you had fun. If you tell me you didn't have fun, that's now a problem for me. Gotcha. But if you had fun, that that is absolutely all I want. So everyone always has fun at our events. It's minimized the power gamer attitude that can tend to flourish in some of these communities. And it seems to be actually something people want. And obviously, there's always going to be somebody who hates the idea. Um, but the majority of people actually have a better time just getting out and playing a game in a very casual setting uh, with their friends and meeting new people. 
we also encourage people to be able to play in these kind of events without necessarily having a full-fledged army that they have beta tested for months before yeah. the event. And it's not uncommon that we're going to a convention and I have, uh, like, for example, Gen Con, we had two tournaments uh, oh, this year. That, this year, and the one guy brought came out, came with a bunker. Yeah. And he never played a bunker before. But he's like, this yeah. has to be fun. I'm playing this bunker. Yeah. And he played. Yeah. And he actually had fun. And, and he, everyone was like, hey, that's cool, actually. So yeah, it's, it makes you play differently. It makes you play not necessarily more uh, more. Uh, I mean, softer, you still play your best game, you know, because we're still in a confrontational game. But it's it's just that your 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 mind is set on a different objective. So that helps. But yeah, we have also people coming to, to our booth at Gen Con, uh, buying their first starter sets mm -hmm. on Tuesday, on Thursday, sorry. Two ladies uh, and a gentleman. And, th and then they, they came back on Friday, bought a little bit more, but... You knew that they were on a budget because obviously, you know, it's Gen Con, so they already spent like the gross uh, income of a small country, and they just go and we tell them, you know, tonight we have a we have an event and you can come, and they're like, but I don't have enough, and we tell them, yes, you do, because if you don't if you don't have 100 points, which is the standard of our game, you play with what you have, and your opponent will adjust. And that's what they do. They come, and we had pay people playing with a starter set, mm -hmm. and we had people playing with 100 points, and we had people playing with 75 points and a half. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can come and you can play. You're not evicted from an event because you don't have the standard. And I think that right now it's really important for everyone to have that. So, so yeah, it's for us, that's the solution that we found right now. And the, inc the dramatic increase of people as, uh, attending our events shows us that that's what they wanted with Dust, at least. <laughs> okay, we have an update from Michael Barnes. The units that show us sold out on the website like air units for the Allies in the southeast U.S. He said he spoke at Origins about units restocking around November, December. Does that sound about right? Does that Okay, sound? yeah. So uh, what's happening is that the range for Dust is massive. Uh, obviously, we've been releasing yeah. products for 10 years, so it happens, okay. And we went through a whole rehaul, I should say, of the whole range to bring it back into the multi-part kits, like the one you have. Uh, for a while, uh, the previous partner wanted to sell the Rattler and the Cobra by themselves. Uh, we found that it was not making sense, uh, mainly for the retailers, because they were complaining about the number of SKUs. Uh, and also for us, because really it multiplies the, the SKUs uh, dramatically just by just for one turret that is different on the same chassis. Um, and financially for the players, they had to buy two vehicles to just get, again, the one weapon that was different. And we didn't think it was fair. Um, so we, we just rebuilt the whole range to limit the number of SKUs. Uh, we shrunk the SKUs by 70%. So we're pretty proud of it. Uh, but we made multi kits like that where you have two turrets for the same chassis so that you can play two different profiles at any time. Uh, and But doing that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And as Alicia described a little earlier, uh, Dust might be our showcase, but it's also a product that we, that we make when we're not working for someone else. And <laughs> we are working a lot for a lot of people right now. Uh, and when I say a lot, it's most of the miniature of the high quality miniatures that are made in plastic that you see on the market right now are done by us. So it can get a little intense. So it, we it, have to make yeah. sure that they're making our products. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it's so so that just takes time. And also, we cannot re-release uh, 55 SKUs in one month uh, what? because it would. Uh, yeah, because that, that be, exactly that would be completely insane for for the retailers and the pressure, the financial pressure for everyone would be uh, out of this world. So we're doing it progressively. Say hi to Kitty. Um, <laughs> hi, Kitty. hi, Kitty. Kitty is here. <laughs> um, we did have another phone. Uh, Michael Barnes also wanted to say any updates on Pelicans. So point. yeah, he's talking about that. Uh, th these are the uh, unit that he was talking about for the allies. Okay. Uh, so the, the pelicans, for example, uh, are going to be re-released um, at Adepticon, if I'm not mistaken. And at Adepticon, they're going to be released not only with the storm and the thunder profile, but also with the tornado profile, which is a brand new plane. 
with a new set of weapons. It's going to be a dual phaser. So it's it's going to bring a new new gameplay abilities to the to the allied players and I think they're going to enjoy it, but doing that takes some time. So that's the reason why it's only releasing at Adepticon. Uh, I didn't know if you saw it, but uh, Radio Free re- uh, posted on here that he ran a 45-man strong Chinese volunteer army the other day. And he says it was not competitive at all, but he said it was f- hella fun. Yes, yeah. it, it's exactly that. I mean, we I have played games. Where, uh, we were at Atl- in Atlanta a couple months ago. No, it was in July. So, yeah, it's, it's almost co- now it's a couple months. We're in September, so it counts. Uh, so it was in July. We were in Atlanta. We had a dust weekender at Gigabytes Cafe. And so it was two days of dust and people came and played all day dust and this kind of things. Same thing with just uh, regular, you know, come and play what you want. And we have one of our patriots that came with an army of oh, all twi- dogs. of 20 wild dogs recon squads. And this is a, a, a unit that is extremely powerful in the game. Uh, and people are, you love the dogs or you hate the dogs, you know. So it's not infrequent in my gaming shop, uh, lo- my local gaming shop, that one of the employees says, oh, those damn dogs, because every time he faces them, they crush him. So um, the guy had 20 dogs, and he faced like several people with it, and everyone had fun. It was <laughs> so over the top, so so stupid, you know. Yeah, and we, we love stupid it, lists. It didn't make I mean, sense at all. Irrational. And, and at the end of the day, we were actually thinking, because, again, it's not because you play relaxed that you're not trying to bring your A game, okay? And it was we were actually trying uh, to find a way to get the list better. So we decided that to be really a, a complete, and sorry for, for my French, but a complete dick, you instead of playing twenty dogs, you would remove two units of dogs and put a superhuman with them, and the superhuman can fly and punch planes because we discovered that we had a weakness against the the planes with this list because, <laughs> of, because obviously you don't chuck your your chihuahua you know at the at the plane hoping to hit the 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 propellers so so yeah we decided to do that and and it became hilarious we were having dinner and really nothing was serious anymore and we were just fantasizing about this list that was absolutely abject and we really had fun with that so that's really the spirit that we're trying to infuse into dust right now uh, we are we are rebuilding the community uh, we have some old players that are still faithful to us and and they're they really uh, enjoy the changes and this kind of things but we are also discovering that because we are working towards women and children we have a whole brand new customer base that is different that enjoy the confrontation enjoys the you know the what what the greeks called the agon the this this facing your opponent you know and trying to get uh, to get the best out of him but at the same time they want to have fun and they want to have a different experience from other games and with dust right now they are finding it so it's really enjoyable yeah our our demo um on our demo team caitlin she's fierce when you yeah, play against she's, her she's super, she's super focused <laughs> but she paints all her minis like one of the one of the walkers that she did was looks like a jackson pollock and it's just like completely splattered with like every color imaginable it's just <laughs> it's just it's great but it's it, actually it actually makes sense it's uh, these are beautiful miniatures really yeah, that I she mean, made but it's really a jackson pollock so yeah. Uh, it's yeah, just it's having fun cool. with your hobby, and that's what the hobby is supposed to be for. It's fun. Correct. If it's just as stressful as your job, it's, it's not worth it's playing. Not fun. Yeah. No. It's kind of like a hold my beer. Let's see what I can do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you kind of talked about, um, and Erica was, we were talking about this community-wise because, like, most of our people are are War Machine and Horde players, and we have a really good community of people. Uh, no matter what the game is, we're all like a huge family. Like one of the things we do at War Machine Weekend, which I started up in Tim Banky, was a social hour. So the Friday that everybody gets there, um, we all get together on this huge back patio. Uh, and last year it was like 40, 50 people, I think. Or maybe 60 people. And oh everybody brought drinks from around where they were. Like Tim bought alcohol from Canada. I brought, everybody brought drinks around from everybody. Everybody brought cigars. And we sat around and we sat and talked about things that were not the game. We, Mm -hmm. you know, there's many things that people have done in this community. Like someone got their army stolen. Well, we go get them a new army. 
you know, and so we have this really tight human community where it breaches past the game. What is the community like on Dust that, you know, is beyond, because I know that y'all said this in the pre-ramble about your uh, dinner that you're doing. Do y'all, I mean, besides that, how is the community like on family? I guess best way to put it. Um, with each other and like that as a whole. My first experience with the Dust community was when we flew out for the Dust World Expo in Arizona. And it, as an outsider, because I'll be the first to admit that I am not a gamer. Um, I'm a nerd, but I'm not a gamer. Uh, I grew up as an only child. I didn't go out. I was a latchkey kid. We just didn't, I didn't hang out with people other than at school. Um, so going there to uh, the Dust World Expo, it was my first opportunity where people actually came up and talked to me as the spouse of somebody there. And it was amazing to actually be talked to and to people asking me questions and asking, you know, what I do and these kinds of things. It's just, I, I did find that in some other communities, people would not talk to me. Um, and it's a little standoffish and difficult. I find that Dusk community tends to be a lot of history buffs, obviously. Um, but then with the new releases of Mythos and um, soon to be the Vril, it, it's going to draw another crowd into it, I think, um, also, mm. or expand upon that. But I do find them to be one of the most welcoming group of people I've ever seen. I have not had any issues with any of them. Um, and even one time I did have an issue with one of them um, with some jokes he was he was saying on the media. Uh, we actually up, ended up being friends through it because, you know, you just, you talk to people and you say that, that hurts my feelings. And he said he was sorry. And I'm like, okay, it's cool. You know, and he is probably a really close friend of mine now. I don't know if I'm answering your question at all, but I, I really wouldn't stay in this if we had a toxic environment. It, well, I would go. It, it's not worth it to me. As I said, the convention is my my place to go to feel the reward of all the work that we're doing. And if the community was toxic and hating when we were at events or saying bad things or, you know, just, it's not even bad things. It's just to be a community that just complains. As a woman, I, I just hate complaining. Uh, life is so hard in other areas. I, I find it daunting to complain about random things, you know, and yeah, I think that they're really good about it. I mean, you can go on our Facebook group and we really don't have to, what's the word? Police. Yes, thank you very much. We don't have to police them. I mean, we had this running gag for a while when people were just like beating a dead horse and we would say, here's a piece of cake. And we would post an actual picture of a of cake. A cake. <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but then soon we didn't have to police anybody, and it's not like we were banning them or blocking them. No. It's just the community itself just didn't want that anymore. They themselves were tired of it, and I think the climate in America, we're just tired of the hatred. So I, I find, and I, and I honestly, I can't say what it's like in other communities now because I'm not really a part of it. Um, if it's happening everywhere, I find that fantastic, but I know in dust, it it really is just the nicest well, community of people. They're very welcoming. I'm going to give an example. Sure. Uh, last Adepticon, we, we had a guy that was coming to play at our event. And he was from Texas. Uh, and really, it's actually Josh Wims. Hi, okay? Josh. Yeah, he's here. Actually, he's, he's <laughs> looking at, he's, he's watching us. But he came to Adepticon and really on a whim. It was like, you know what? Heck it. I'm doing it. I'm coming. He went to Adepticon just to play the event. He left like before the end of the show. It was really like, let's try it, you know. And he arrives the, it was the Wednesday before the show. And he basically arrives a little bit ahead of the show. He has nothing to do. He goes, hey guys, what are you doing? And we're like, well, we're going to grab a burger. You want to come with us? And he came with us and we had a blast. And we didn't talk about the game or anything. We just talked about life, why, what he was doing and these kind of things. And 
and that was fun and now he's a friend and and really it's it's really cool just to have this kind of of people you know that come from everywhere uh, you do an event you start talking with people and they come from i mean absolutely everywhere oh yeah and they just want to to have a chat and have some fun with some people that they barely you know sometimes they're like hey uh, yeah I've, I've seen you on facebook you're fun and that's all and I mean, they are really relaxed. They are, it's really, really uh, laid back. It's really that. It's all about being laid back. And that's the reason why our events have changed is because you could feel that the people wanted this kind of laid back environment in, in game and outside of the game. So I think that Alicia pointed the finger on the right thing. Uh, considering the climate in America right now, I think that people are really craving these havens of peace and you know we all agree on one one thing we disagree on all the other things but we agree on one thing we're having fun and that's all that matters so so yeah the, the family style exists yeah definitely so with that being said because we got a little bit of time and we can go over to media section because i think we've covered almost thing we always do a state of the game where do you think dust is at right now are they crashing which doesn't sound like it are they right about the middle uh where they're we're, we're kind of solid but we're getting there or are we almost at the peak or are we at the peak of their game and we can't get any better oh, we're not at the peak no you're not even a remotely no. close of the peak um so uh so gameplay wise we have the best version of the game ever it's it seems cheesy to say that but really uh olivier did an excellent job of rebalancing the game uh, with the help of a lot of people uh, that honestly I don't even have all the names because he's really secretive about his all his methods mm -hmm. uh, but really a lot of people are helping him and he's really really doing a great job uh, creating the best profiles and really between the mythos between the desert scorpions and the Japanese that are about to be released the game the gameplay has really changed and has really evolved into a, a real game and jo not just an appetizer game with for history buffs um, on the on the industrial part of the things uh, we are we are really close to the top of our game right now as i said uh, we have released some even the kits that are not necessarily our best sellers but we have the pd47 for the ssu for example that is technologically speaking amazing and people will never know but people will never see it uh, looking at the miniature but we created a new kind of mold that we were the only ones doing uh, because we wanted to make this miniature in less parts. It should have taken 45 parts to make it, and we managed to do it in 20, uh, just because we changed the way the mold was built. And for us, it's it's really a moment of pride. So the Desert Scorpion uh, starter set is going to be entirely made in hard plastic, including the, the troopers that usually are made in PVC. And same thing for us, it's, it's one step ahead. Uh, and it's a huge step. Just when we think that Paolo can't come up with any more ideas, he yeah. he brings this out. So then you have, <laughs> artistic, artistically speaking, uh, yeah, uh, Paolo is doing a job right now that is insane to create the Japanese and at the same time the reels that are going to be released way later. Uh, but is I think he's, we found a new... You were talking about crashing. I think that the game crashed at a point. I think that really we, there was question even inside Dust about closing the whole Dust part of the company and ending the game. The One of the partners was really fed up with all the drama and just wanted to have peace. So um, there was a, a point where we were there. I think we're getting back up. Uh, we are definitely far from our maximum. But yeah, we are we are progressing, and we are finally having fun, and finally making money out of it. So uh, we are we are in a good place right now. Good. It's it's a lot of work. Uh, obviously, we have growing pains because uh, it's a lot of new activities for everyone. Mm -hmm. The dust didn't used to sell their own miniatures. They would always have a publishing partner that had the the marketing uh, tools and staff obviously when you go from ffg to be your own distributor with two people 
there's a discrepancy in, in staff. <laughs> so, and so we have strict uh, no discounting policy. So yeah. it's it's not like we're just going to spread across the United States just like that because we're not like other companies and we do hold to our maps um, because we-, we really are focused on the local game store and supporting the local game store and trying to make sure that you always will have a local game store. We're trying some new marketing and sales methods uh, that are all focused on slow growth. And so we're slowly grow- growing, but we're growing steadily. I didn't have any month that was bad. I don't have a show that is bad. Uh, everything is profitable, whatever we do. And that's that's really, for us, it's really important. So yeah, we're, we're trying to be durable because the game has been there for 10 years and not many games can say that, especially in the miniature industry. Uh, so, so yeah, we're trying to, if the state of the game is in progress. Good. Um, this is our, guys, I'm going to be shutting down the poll in a couple of minutes. We're going to go jump over the media section just for a few media things. Um, I'll be shutting the poll down in five minutes, or not the uh, giveaway in five minutes. So if you're watching on Facebook and you want to jump in on this, as soon as you hit that follow button on our Twitch channel, you get 20 dice, and that'll get you some tickets into uh, the giveaway. I will be giving this away. I got pretty much everything done I wanted to do. I just needed to clean up the base, put some trees, and put some grass on it. Um, I know I didn't put the star and stuff because this is, you know, American, but I think it turned out pretty decent. It, look, it looks pretty amazing. <laughs> Okay, they can just get a decal. I should enter the raffle. Yeah. <laughs> you are more than welcome. If you're in the Twitch channel, you are more than welcome to. Um, and if anybody has any dust models and stuff, I actually had a fun time painting this up. I've never done camo before. It's the first time doing my airbrush with a camo. Um, and I kind of looking forward to doing another one. Uh, I may do like a desert, or not a desert, a, like, I'm definitely picking up the samurai. And I may, and of course, that thing really is not going to be camouflageable if you think about it that's a new word but i think i'm going to do like a, a night black gray camo scheme with that um okay with that. yeah so guys uh, about five more minutes left on the giveaway come over to fa- come over to twitch sign in to hit a follow get in there but let's go to the media section so we talk about some other stuff that's not dusk uh, media section um i have plenty of things to talk about we're going to run out of time since we only got about six minutes uh, Erica, do you have any media that you would like to talk about? Not really. I don't have time to watch stuff during the week. <laughs> 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 no. I, I, I've been watching some um, episodes of Grimm with my roommate. Oh, and great series. Of- Grimm is really fun. And like other than that... <sighs> That's about it. That's like all I have time for when I get home from work at night. Like, that's it. Thank you, Lone Star 40K, for the follow. If you want to get on that raffle, type exclamation point raffle, space, and then whatever the amount of tickets you want to spend. Um, what else? So, and actually, Grim, I saw that, the entire series. I love it. I'm glad that it got an ending and they just didn't cancel it. So, good choice. How many space RPs are you going to give Grim? I don't no, because <laughs> the, the problem with that is is just whenever I happen to be home and she's watching it is when I join her. So I actually haven't even seen it all the way through. I've just seen like every Snippets. like third episode. <laughs> so all I know is it's decent. And if I ever get time, I'll go back and actually watch all of it. But every third episode doesn't tell you a lot. No. <laughs> so, all I know is it's it's fun to watch, but I have no idea what's going on. Um, also, John, can you uh, post in how to do the raffle so some people may know how to do that? Because um, some people may or may not. If you could post that, how to do that. Uh, all right, you two. You each get one media thing. What do you? What's your media and how are you going to rate it? Um... So as I was telling you a little bit before, I've been watching Vikings, uh, binge watching the whole season. Uh, I would give a rating that would be probably in the middle, <laughs> uh, because the first three seasons are brilliant. Uh, I love that they are also respectful of the languages and these kind of things of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they took actors that were not necessarily uh, super beautiful or 
uh, super American. Yeah, <laughs> I know, agree. To, to, to do to do the show, and they took some local actors with their accents and these kind of things, and it's kind of brilliant. Uh, I would sadly be a little less enthusiastic about the last two seasons uh, because they doubled the amount of episodes, and I really hate seasons that are just long for the sake of being long. I understand that they are successful and they can finance more episodes. And honestly, they are, uh, again, well-produced and well-acted and well even well-directed, I would say. Oh, yeah. uh, but the story doesn't hold for 20 episodes. And there are some moments that are just here for the sake of filling in the blanks. And it's not necessary. I prefer series that are really condensed and and uh, have the not necessarily the action, but at least the plot moving forward all the time. So, but yeah, it's it's still a good show. I, I would recommend people to at least watch the first three seasons attentively. I, and uh, we we had mentioned this uh, partially in the pre ramble, and I think the reason because Vikings is one of my one of my favorite series of all mm -hmm. time. And I just recently got caught up on Amazon uh, Prime. Yeah. And if you don't know, it's based off of a true story. Uh, but, of course, the main actor gets killed uh, because it's based off of it. And I think that's pretty much where it starts bleeding off, where it starts doing those episodes where it's taking a lot longer. Because they're kind of making crap up now. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's a little bit of that, yeah. And... I, I, it's, I don't know. It, it felt it's also more doom and gloom for the sake of doom and gloom. Yes. Uh, again, again, it's the life of the Vikings. You know, during the the medieval times, it's not. I mean, it's not. It's not fun. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's not fun at all. But uh, really, the the latest seasons were really doom and gloom, and it's and plus again this slow rhythm all the time is due to the double of the amount of episodes was. Eh. So yeah, I would I would put a, a medium note, medium grade because really I'm not uh, because I, I like to to be uh, so about two space arbies. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Let's see, what you got? Me? Yes, ma'am. Lemony Snickets, Lemony Snickets on Netflix. I love it. I'm I'm sorry, but I'm still that person that when the kids would go to sleep, the cartoons would still be running, and <laughs> I never problem with that. Um, so. I, I really feel like it has something for everyone. Everyone was laughing out loud with the last episode that we were watching. I mean, just the sass in it with some of the responses and one-liners. It's it's brilliant. Neil Patrick Harris yeah. is amazing in it. It's, yeah. it's it's really brilliant, and it's really well done. It's really respectful of the written material. Yeah. And at the same time, they managed to get out of the book and make it really their own. Uh, and I have a 12-year-old happy-go-lucky I have a 16-year-old goth who doesn't want to laugh at everything, at anything <laughs> in life. I have the 17-year-old who barely looks at me sometimes, and then sometimes she's super happy, and sometimes we just don't even know. And then we've got Greg, who he'll like anything, let's be honest. I'm a TV whore. And then you have me, who's super picky, and I don't want to watch anything because I like closure in everything that I watch. And I love this show. I, I just... Oh, it's, it's really, really It's good. really wonderful. Really so good. that besides Sherlock, you know, I love Sherlock. Mm -hmm. But so I would rate it the tops. So oh, yeah. that would be my favorite. If there was anything that I could watch, like right now, besides my classic movies, it would be Lemony Snicket's. So how many space pieces does Lemony Snicket get? <sighs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. I mean, it's it's herpy free. I <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine anything. I, I would say if it could be happier at times, it would be better. But that's not the point. It's lemony stickets. It's, it's a series. It's not of, even. It's not even gloomy. It's, yeah. It, this fake gloom all the time is really actually funny. Yeah. And when you realize what happens to their adventures, there it's it's always uplifting. It's always. It's very hard to find a show that every age will enjoy. I mean, I can't imagine that. It's also always rewarding the clever people and the yeah. the people that make the effort. It's oh god! Uh, and the guy in the, the beginning the, when he he says this horrible, <laughs> gloomy, depressing thing, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Beatrice? You know, you took my breath away, and what? And, and then you have something else. It's like, and then you died, or then and then yeah. and then it took yours. You know, and it's just like, you don't know 
just how to take that. And then the show starts, and it's just fantastic. No, that's, that's really good. Yeah. yeah. I, I encourage you to watch it. I've got it on my queue. I haven't had a chance. I'm yeah. binge-watching a bunch of stuff and everything, but it is on my queue. Yeah. Um, mine this week, since there were, oh, we're actually a little, little bit over, but who cares? We had a good time. Uh, I watched The House, which is uh, has Will Ferrell in it, where they turn a house into a casino so they can pay for their daughter's uh, college. <laughs> oh. Um and it's a typical Will Ferrell movie. Uh, slapstick yeah. comedy, uh, stupid one-liners, uh, stupid stupid acting. And I don't want to say stupid acting isn't bad acting, but like they do some really stupid stuff. Uh, there's one scene in there where, and I can't remember the lady's name uh, that's with her. Uh, he, she's done stuff with him before. But she takes a mini blowtorch and puts it on her crotch and like humps in the air with a little mini blowtorch and it's just hilarious the way that it's all played out um there's some really good one-liners some good shockers uh some good silly fun stuff um you do see some stuff coming and it's not like you're super surprised by it um but i mean for a lazy day i mean since we get you know our most of us get tomorrow off it was like ah, well screw it let's do it And, it's uh, a good popcorn movie. Yeah, and, and that's best way to put it. Just sit back, chill, laugh at some of the stupid jokes, um, you know, go groan at some other stuff, but it was well worth it. I would probably give it maybe two space herpes, just because, you know, you probably could find something better to do with your time, but why? It's a lazy Sunday. Um, let's go ahead and give this thing away real quick. So I'm going to close the giveaway in five, four, three, two, one. We are closed. All right, let's go ahead and pick a winner. Uh, if your name is drawn, please either A, send me your address here on Twitch or find us on Facebook, um, and we will get that to you as soon as possible. Um, if you are uh, overseas or somewhere where it takes a little bit longer, just be patient. Um, and before we do that, we want to thank all of our sponsors. We want to thank uh, Broken Egg Games for, of course, if you just noticed, we got our widgets and stuff that come out, which is our uh, affiliate account. And we do have our new stuff that just came out um, for all of our games. Uh, that that looks produce. really good, by the way. Oh, thanks. Uh, we, yeah. we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort on that. I was really proud yeah. of it. That's really nice. Um, also, Tectonic Crest Studios. Everybody knows Dan. Dan's an awesome man. I um, can't wait to see him again at War Machine Weekend. And, of course, uh, Chris from uh, Mechanica Studios for doing some more stuff with us. We appreciate everything they do. And the winner of this model is... All right, someone give me a drum roll. No, not a sneeze, a drum roll. <laughs> winner is free... Radio Free, dude, congratulations. You have won the new model from me. Uh, make sure Radio, either follow me, uh, send us something here on Twitch, or like I said, uh, send it, find us on Facebook, send us something there, or if you just know me on Facebook, message me there. Uh, give me your address. Give me all. I need your first and last name, complete address, if you're overseas, all the weird stuff. Um, that way I know. It'll be a few more days. I got to finish up. I'm almost done with the model. I've got to finish up the base a bit, put a little bit more things on there, touch up a bit stuff. Um, other than that, um, sounds like it. Make sure you send me something cool. Thanks, uh, Radio Free. Uh, if you are new to the channel and you like seeing what we do, uh, join us all the time because we. Um, we podcast on Sunday where we bring some type of episode of some random stuff that we decided to do. Uh, but on Monday, Kathy Wuppel uh, paints online 10 a.m. to 12 central um, a.m., of course, uh, where she paints a bottle. And then she also does it on Thursday. And then every once in a while I get on, usually on Wednesday, either the RPG or I do painting of a model. Um, other than that, guys, thanks a lot for coming on. Uh, I've been looking forward to this a lot because I think y'all are awesome people and I'm glad y'all came on. Thank you very thank you. much for having we, us. We enjoyed it. It was really fun. And of course, we want to thank Erica for coming on at the last minute. Um, for coming very on, last Andrew. minute. Very, very last <laughs> minute. 
Um, also, um, I forgot to mention, John just mentioned in, in the thing, we do have some RPGs coming out, and um, I have a new Rolling Dice episode coming out. Uh, new Sewer Bear will be coming out in this Friday. Um, so be prepared for that. I want to thank everybody for coming on. Everybody have a lot of fun. Um, hopefully I hear more from Dust, guys. Other than that, we are going to rock it out with our intro. For more than dice, I'm Gonzo. For Dust USA, that is... Craig and Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> and my co-host right now for the time is... Erica. All right. We have the music playing, guys. We usually make stupid comments. Like, I'm going to finish the rest of this bourbon and then probably get a little bit more shit face tonight. What about y'all? It's not Facebook appropriate. <laughs> we're not on Facebook, we're on Twitch. <laughs> Y'all are bad. <laughs> Alright. Guys, thanks for watching. We are gonna go home. <laughs>